Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here. Today we'll be checking out GNOME boxes. First we'll install it by going to the Ubuntu Software Center and by going up top and searching for boxes or GNOME boxes, both should return a result. And you should see it here, kind of with this 3D box, GNOME boxes, virtualization made simple. What we're going to be doing is installing this today and then talking about how GNOME boxes work, who it's intended for, and some of the pitfalls here using GNOME boxes and why I still suggest to use VirtualBox over GNOME boxes. As you can tell, we have ratings here with about a third of the ratings being below three stars. We're gonna hit install and put in our administrative password in order to install GNOME boxes. So what is GNOME boxes? It's a virtualization software that allows you to emulate virtual machines on your computer and install and test various different operating systems. Now, one great thing about GNOME boxes is that it's super minimal. It just basically sets up the virtual machine for you and actually has a great user interface as we'll see here in a moment. Let's let this thing install and then we'll launch GNOME boxes. If you wanna install it from the terminal, you can look up how to do that from a different guide, but I find the easiest way is to do it through a software center. All right, now that we have boxes, we'll just type in boxes into a search bar and boom, we'll launch it. I've used boxes in the past, so I actually have two virtual machines already running in the background. Ubuntu 20.10, the server edition, and Fedora 34, the workstation edition. We can see that this is a very minimalistic program. Boxes up top only has a quit, and then in the program itself here, if we make it smaller so we can tell a difference, we can see that there's a plus button. This plus button allows you to create a new virtual machine, and you can select some of the predefined virtual machines that they have. What this will do is if you select one, it will download the ISO for this and start the installation for you very quickly, much like you would expect with an express installation in some other virtualization softwares. Other than that, you have a select a OS source so you can either download more operating systems or even enter a download link up top. And they actually have quite a few. Check this out because it makes installation much easier. Such things as CentOS, Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, Debian, NetBSD, FreeBSD, OpenSUSE, NixOS, Fedora, and many, many more. All right, if we hit the previous link, we can also install an operating system directly from an ISO or image file that you download from the internet. I currently don't have one on my computer. I didn't bother downloading one, but you can select on your file system somewhere. Let's say it's in downloads, an ISO image. I actually do have some here. I forgot about these two, but let's say I wanted the Ubuntu 2010 live server AMD ISO. I can select that and I can actually customize my resource allocation. What is a pitfall here right off the bat is you really don't get much customization on the virtual machine itself. That's because it is a minimal and easy to use virtualization software that piggybacks off of KVM and QEMU. And we can see here that we get to choose a maximum disk size for the virtual machine we're creating and a maximum memory size that we get to also choose. So if I hit create, that just spins off a machine and starts creating it right away. And you can see here, we can start using our Ubuntu server quite quickly. Anyways, I'm gonna hit the back button here and we can see now that I have Ubuntu 20.10 and Ubuntu 20.10.2. If I right click, I can notice that I do have a few more options, including properties, but I can tell that the machine is currently on. One thing I would like is a picture in the picture showing the actual screen of what's going on currently. I know if I click on this, there is something in the background and I currently don't see that there. I wish that was across the board working, whether you're in BIOS or whether you're actually in the operating system, one of those little things I'm griping on. Anyways, I'm gonna force shut down this machine since we really haven't done anything with it and then click properties. In the properties, we see that it's a QEMU session. So it's actually emulated here using QEMU. The name is Ubuntu 20.10.2 since I have a second one. Now, what's interesting is 
you do get to look at a few more settings here. Again, adjust the memory and then adjust the maximum disk size. But now you have CPUs at the bottom. You can specify how many CPUs you want. I currently have two CPUs on this system. And that's one thing I really don't like about GNOME boxes is that it will automatically select all the CPUs that you have on your computer. So I have four CPUs. It's gonna try using all four CPUs for my virtual environment. And I typically only care to use one. So you'll have to go in here and change that around if you want a different amount of CPUs being used. Up top, it shows you if you are running, you can look at the CPU usage, IO usage, and network usage. You can restart for shutdown and look at some logs here on the right hand side. Devices and shares allows you to see what CD or DVD is currently in and mounted on the CD or DVD ROM drive. Snapshots allow you to create multiple snapshots of the current virtual environment and you can simply revert to the state, delete, or rename a state as necessary. All right, if we get out of here, that's really it for properties. Again, not much if you compare this to something like VirtualBox, which would be a good comparison software because it's also intended for virtualization. It's free. There are so many more options in VirtualBox, such as editing the menu, editing sound and sound drivers, editing what kind of buses you want to emulate, including EFI or non-EFI emulation and even nesting virtual machines inside of each other. There's much more settings. We're not gonna go through all of them, but let's check out on the right-hand side some of the nice features. You can search for multiple different boxes or virtual machines by hitting the search bar, hitting the magnifying glass, and then searching in the search bar. Let's say you have quite a few. It does work quite great here. If you click on this button here, you get a different view, either a listed view or a icon view. Following that, the check mark allows you to select multiple items and do stuff with them, such as opening new windows, making them favorites, or pausing and or deleting on the right-hand side. Right of that is a menu with keyboard shortcuts, help, and about boxes. Another thing that I'm not particularly happy about here is that there apparently is a way to connect multiple different virtual machines that even exist on another physical computer that runs virtual machines or even a virtual server. I can't find that in this edition. That's part of Linux here. They even claim it in the documentation, but for me, they at least haven't made it clear enough to figure out how to create that remote connection in order to maintain my remote virtual machines. Again, some of the stuff that I just don't like is that default of using all the CPU cores for the guest virtual machine. The lack of being able to configure the virtual machines, there's just some important stuff that you need to be able to adjust in the virtual machine, making sure you emulate it properly or else you probably won't be able to install an operating system at all on the virtual machine. Some things like the full screen mode get a little messed up every once in a while for me. I wish they also would have kept some of the similar shortcuts like when you want to release the mouse from a virtual machine to a host. I think it's like alt escape. I can't remember right, but on most other virtualization software, it's control alt or just control. But as far as the good goes, I like the minimal approach here. There's not a whole bunch of stuff in your face that you have to select from for people who want to use a simple environment and just spin off a virtual machine real quick. It's great. The resolutions have pretty much worked right out of the gate. I don't really see any reason to install like a guest editions or extra tools from a CD in order to make things work properly. Things have worked pretty well out of the box in this boxes app, but overall it's a maybe a three out of five at best in my opinion. Hopefully there's more development here with GNOME boxes. I'm not sure where the project stands at at this point, but good luck to them. Let me know if you're going to check out GNOME Boxes or start using it in the comments below. Also, let me know if I missed anything. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.